Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. You're right, you do have to repent. But in repenting, what are some of the things that you have to repent from? So you got to ask yourself, if God said he wants you to keep the laws, and or keep his rules but if you break them what is that called you're not living it. you're not living it what you say what you think if if, the, if your father gave you rules and you break those rules what is the lord going to do to you he going to punish you right so we all have to understand what sin is what is sin what is the breaking of god's laws right so we're about to go into the bible and these are understanding the judgments of the lord Right? This is understanding the fear of the Lord. This is a part of being taught how to fear God. So we're about to teach you what actually sin is first. Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. So God said, whosoever committeth sin, transgress or breaks God's rules. You understand? So you just said, thou, sh uh, thou shalt not kill. That's breaking God's laws, right? So, what is something else? Because that's just one law. Say that one more time. Commit adultery. commit adultery. God said, don't commit adultery, right? Is that something that's going on in our community? All day long, right? What, what you got? What you think? You don't got much? That's all right. We, we, go, we, go, I'm, we still going to build with you. That's okay. So, you say commit adultery. You say kill. Both of those are breaking God's rules. Right. You understand? Right. So how do we get back to understanding and applying the rules of God? I just said it before. You got to repent. But you just can't repent if you're not with it. Okay. You got to be serious about it. Not to play the game. Okay, so my question to you is, you said you have to repent. So what is repentance? You said change, right? So you got to stop doing what... You got to stop doing that's disobeying God, you got to start doing what he said to do, right? right. So, all right, so today is the Day of Atonement, okay? And uh, with the Day of Atonement, you are not supposed to be uh, eating anything. You're not supposed to be drinking anything for 24 hours. You're not supposed to work for 24 hours. That's one of the rules of God, right? So in doing those things, we are honoring the Lord. By what? We're fasting. We're trying to, you know, sit up prayers to make sure the Lord is able to hear our prayers, right? Because we've committed sin in the past and we want the Lord to hear us, right? right? right. So, in your case, you said commit adultery. That's something that th uh, th those were one of the things that's going on prevalent in our community, right? right? So, in changing from that, it starts from learning what, uh, what is adultery to be able to stop committing adultery. Do you agree? I agree. Okay, so how can you commit adultery? Like what? Uh, like messing with somebody's wife or somebody, uh, 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 daughter that ain't, ain't, uh, ain't married. Yeah. But the thing no, is, is here. That's if you yeah, can't that's live that's by the yeah. word, see, some of them, they used to is, fast, but they don't know how. Quick. Right. As you know what I'm They ain't used to that. Right. You used to. Right. You know what God wants you to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why you so, out here in the preaching. Exactly. But people be on the same accord you on. It'll be a better place. But again, that you're you're absolutely right. But that's why we out here. We out here so we can teach God's laws, so we can get everybody on the same page to get that to get their spirit right with the Lord before He come back. Because we, what we don't want to be uh, in His in His line of judgment, right? Right. So you said uh, committing adultery is something that goes on in the community, right? So what does let's see what God say on how you can commit adultery? Because there's multiple ways you can commit adultery. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 28. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery 
with her already in his heart. So what, what does that say? Hold on, don't, don't, don't run. Don't run, brother. Don't run. So what, what is God saying? What is God saying? I, look, we're going to read it again. We're going to read it again. I want, you, I want you to be able to explain it. Okay? Uh -huh. This is dope. But the uh, thing is, hold on, hold on one second. Hey, so you gave me. I'm glad y'all like Okay. Oh, praise. Absolutely. Yes, it is. They know if people go to God like the folks, they're going to go to the right or to the left. Charge it up to you. Absolutely. So, I'll, before, because I know you're trying to walk away. But I want you to be able to explain this because brother, people don't know. People don't know. This is Christ himself speaking, right? Right. Okay, so we're going to read it again. I want you to be able to tell me what, what this is saying. Okay? All right, read that again from the top. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. Okay, so what is lust? What is left? Your flesh is weak. Your flesh is weak. But if, it, if you're dealing with God, you ain't going to do that. But you're crossing that line with Him. But the thing is this here. He's a forgiving God, but if you want Him to be forgiven, you have to be forgiven. But here's the thing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One, one second. One, se one second. I'm getting to the point. Yes. Yes. One second. You said He's a forgiving God, right? Yeah. So in a forgiving God, if you want the Lord to forgive you, you have to start doing what? You have to change. So you can't do the same things over and over again, right? So God is saying, read that again from the top. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. So it says, if whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, what is that going into? If you're looking on a woman to lust after her, what's going on in your mind? Lust is weak. You got you got to be able to explain it to me. I can't say, I, look, brother. I can't just say the flesh is weak and everybody know what I'm saying. So you got to be able to bring it home. So what what he says? If, read that one more time. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. So what is that talking about? So you you gazing and you wanting her for what? So, if a sister walked down here, and we know, look, today is hot, right? If a sister walked down here with, with skin-tight shorts on, and you look, what are you doing? You're lusting, right? So, what did God, what did God say that was, though? To lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Why did the Lord say that? Because, look, even though he's a forgiving God, he's a forgiving God. Why did the Lord say that? Right, he's a forgiving God. But also, he knew, you know, we're going to be some of the best. Because we're going to, one thing we got to learn is this here. The devil involved. So, if you got God and believe in trust in, in your heart, it ain't nothing going to get in your way. But, you, but you, you, miss, you still missing the point. Okay, give You're me still the missing point. the point. The, Read that again. The, no, you, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So the question is, what is your heart? So what is your heart? What is your heart? What is your heart? So you say the heart is here. Okay, we go. We gonna show you and prove in the Bible. We are gonna show you and make it plain. All right, because a lot of times. We read the words and we don't actually understand what it's saying. That's right. All right. So That's we're going to dig That's through the Bible and we're going to show you exactly what God is trying to tell us. All right. Yeah. Read what you got. Mark 7. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So he says, from the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Can this vessel that's pumping in your chest, can it think? So what is it talking about? Okay, we're going to read it again from the top. For from within, 
Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. So what thinks? What's a part of your body that thinks? Your brain, right? Your mind. So he's saying, out of the mind of men proceed evil thoughts. Out of here. The Lord is saying, your heart, because your body, your brain right here, is the whole nervous system of your body. It controls everything, right? So he's saying, out of your mind proceed evil thoughts. Hey, brother, what we going, what we talking about right now? We talking about adultery and how it comes out of your, when it starts in your mind. All right, read that again. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So, what are some of the things that comes in your mind? Read. Adultery. What? Adultery. What? Adultery. Why is that the first thing? Why? But why? The mind is weak. But why is it the first thing? Go right back to to Matthew five. Go right back to Matthew 5. Hold on one second. We Hold on one second. Go right back to Matthew 5. The book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So, and committing adultery already in your heart, it starts where? The mind. It starts in your mind. So a woman is walking down the street and you gazing, you sitting there like, oh, okay. Guess what? You committed all sorts of uncleanness in your mind. You understand that? That's what, the, that's what Christ was saying. That's what Jesus was saying. So in order to repent from doing that, we have to do what? We have to now search the scriptures to see how we're going to control our mind and our thoughts. You understand? So how can we control our minds and our thoughts? Every person that walks God's face on earth is going to be because they're not in there. Now, in the Bible, you know what I'm saying? John said, chapter 14, just let not your heart be look, broke. Look, look. But some of them always... But check it, but check it. You, you say you used to be a deacon, right? You say you used to be a deacon, right? Yes, I did. Okay, so your mind should be in the scriptures, right? It's supposed to be stronger than we. It's, suppo it's supposed to be stronger, but how do how do you make your mind stronger though? To get back into him. To get back into him. And how do we do that? We start, we start to read, and we start to fast, and, and, and be serious about what he wants to do. But here's the thing. In order to do that, it goes right back to what we were talking about before. Psalms 119, 142. You got to understand, this is where it starts. Bring it out. You have to understand that in order to actually be able to understand the Bible and apply the Bible, you have to rethink and change your mind. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.